The effect of antidiuretic hormone on the kidneys. First up, antidiuretic hormone under normal conditions. We have antidiuretic hormone in green, we have water in blue, and red blood cells in red. As pictured here, we have the brain and the spinal cord. We have the kidney, and we also have the bladder. Now, in the brain, underneath this segment here, we have the posterior pituitary gland, as pictured in this image, in the front rather than the back, just so we can see it properly. Now, the posterior pituitary gland is an extension of the neurohypophysis, which is actually a part of the hypothalamus, and it injects or secretes ADH into the blood vessels. The antidiuretic hormone then travels through the bloodstream and is pumped around the body until it reaches the kidneys. Once it reaches the kidneys, it goes to the nephrons and stimulates the production of aquaporin molecules which allow more water to be reabsorbed. Aquaporins shown in as the blue lines. Water is reabsorbed, thus minimal urine is produced. Next we have ADH not under normal conditions. Now this can be caused in many ways. It can be due to genetic defects or possible physical damage uh, to the posterior pituitary gland, thus resulting in no ADH being released or not enough being released. Now the effects of this can be quite uh, great and detrimental to the person because when no ADH is released the nephrons cannot produce the aquaporin mo molecules to a great enough extent thus the water goes into the collecting ducts and then filters down into the bladder filling up the bladder quite regularly as the water is being excreted too much and this then results in obviously a bad situation because the person is going to be dehydrated and uh, yep as you can see oh shit this results in diabetes insipidus if you ain't no pump by your shorty might go geico for your money money